So we're about ready to paint. Everything's wiped down and taped off. Um, and this is what I'm gonna use. And I use this a lot on truck frames, um, suspension parts, really anything I, I don't need. I, I'm not a painter, so this is just preservation. So what I typically use, this is the paint, the paint, paint primer. This one, because we're using bare metal, it's a different primer I usually use. This is just clean metal primer by Rust-Oleum, and it's supposed to prevent rust. I, ideally, the guy I know who is a painter says epoxy primer and a sealer is the way to go, but this is only gonna be as good as what the guy did that I took it to to have it sandblasted and painted, which is basically this stuff. So, what I do is I set it up like this. We're gonna be spraying it. So I have one cup just for cleaning stuff, one cup for measuring out, and sometimes if I'm painting a lot, I'll mix it up in this one. But being though I'm only gonna probably need to fill this once, maybe twice, I'm not gonna make a big batch. I just make it quart by quart, because this will fill the gun almost twice. So I use this primer, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna reduce it with acetone. You can use acetone, you can use mineral spirits. I like acetone. Um, I don't know, it just seems to dry a little faster maybe. I don't, I'm not sure, but I like the results we get with the acetone. And it's four to one. So every four ounces of paint, one ounce of thinner, that's usually what I use. And I like to use in the paint a catalyst hardener. So that gives you that, that real durable top finish in the paint so uh, it holds up well. And the fact that this is gonna be in the sun what I'm going to paint will probably fade. There's probably no hardener in this paint here that he put on. I'm not sure. I didn't ask him. But we'll know after it's out in the sun for a little while because one part will fade and the other one won't. Not as badly anyways. So what I'm going to do is mix up my paint or my primer and uh, I'll reduce it. We're going to use a Hobo Freight gun. I have no idea what this gun cost. It was given to me um, and I've been using it for what? five, six years. Mm -hmm. I clean it up real good when I'm done. A lot of guys say they throw it away and buy a new one. Well, I'm cheap, I guess, because I just clean the gun um, because I have everything else to clean up. So I just clean the gun first and clean the, everything else later afterwards with what I use to clean the gun. So uh, HVLP, high volume, low pressure gun. So this gun is a top fill. So this paint sits on top of here. Air comes in here. When you pull the trigger, you're actually activating air to come out of the nozzle. And what happens is it comes this way and this way. Wait, yeah, it comes out the two edges here and here. It's, the air goes this way and goes this way. So however you would you you adjust the air it tells you how wide of a fan that you're going to make and how much paint comes in based on how big the hole is you make for this paint to come through. Now this can also be turned this way. When it turns this way, your fan goes this way. When you turn it this way, your fan goes this way. And it's a good little gun. It, it's worked real well for me, but I, like I said, I clean it up real good when I'm done. Doesn't look like it now, but that's a lot of painting on that. Um, and then I use this little pressure regulator. This is nothing more than a pressure regulator off an old 110 compressor that died on me. I just took this regulator out, added a fitting on either end, and I put it right at the gun. That way while I'm painting, if I need to change and adjust, I can do it right here, plus I can see exactly what, what the pressure is. I typically spray between 24 and 28 PSI. Just depends on you know how big of an area, if it's more confined, if it's wider. If it's wider, like I'm doing a truck frame, I'll go towards 28. If it's something more controlled like this, I'll go a little bit lower just to help me control the fan because I'm not a painter, just trying to figure it out. So now I'm going to mix it up. It's four to one, four parts paint, one part reducer. And as far as the catalyst is concerned, quite honestly, I just pour about the same amount in each time I mix. And uh, I always guess because uh, you can read directions and all that, but I just usually add some in. Probably should measure it. But I'll get it mixed up and uh, we'll get ready to spray some primer. So this primer is thinner than paint and it says no more than 5% of thinner. Let me go to 
with 12 ounces. That looks pretty thick. Yeah, it does. You know, I've always mixed this the same. I've never... That rusty metal primer, I have always mixed it the same as I did the paint. I did four to one, seemed to work well, no issues. So, I don't know what I'll do here, but if that's 12 ounces, So that was 12 to 16, so that was my ratio anyways, because I went three, yeah, three to one. That'll be all right. That's a nice thickness. I'm okay with that. Three to one, four to one. It's one, two, three to one. So if I went one, a little more paint, take it up to 24, I think I could do that and be okay. I only bought a quart of this because I rarely paint fresh metal. It's usually always rusty metal. And you might be able to use the rusty metal primer on bare metal, but I read this and thought it'd be a good idea just to use this instead. Oh yeah, that's better. Yeah, you'll have to go over that again. Huh? You'll have to go over that again. Your um, container is hitting the... That's okay. I'll go over More important to get... I know, I'm just telling you.
Okay. He's on his second cup of primer and uh, acetone mixed. So we got two coats of primer on now and it says before you top coat it should dry be completely dry usually within 24 hours depending on humidity and temperature well it's plenty hot today but the humidity is kind of high too so this may not dry real fast so we're just going to hold off let it dry overnight come back tomorrow and we'll go ahead and paint the color on it i hate to take this much time but it's pointless to put primer on and paint over it before it's cured because you know obviously it's not at its peak performance so we're just going to wait one thing about paint, it can make you the welder you ain't. <laughs> What's the next day? It was very difficult for me to just walk away from this and just wait for it to dry. But the purpose of primer is to prep the metal, to, to prep the metal so it doesn't rust, plus give the paint something to grab a hold of. So if we try to put this together and go ahead and paint this while that wasn't cured, it was the same as just not even using primer. It would be a wasted step. So I wanted to make sure it was plenty good and dry. So when I go to check to see if it's dry, I'm going to look somewhere where the paint is less critical. In here, one of these holes, I'd go in there and make sure it was dry. There's a tendency for people to want to touch it and rub it and feel how smooth it is and all that kind of stuff. I refrain from doing that because the oils in your fingertips can, can contaminate the top of that primer and then your paint may not stick in those places. You know, and the whole purpose of the primer is, you know, we want a pre preservation. We want this to hold out as long as we possibly can. So now that it is completely dry, we're going to go ahead and mix up the paint. The paint is the same mixture. The only difference is we're going to be adding a hardener. The hardener is going to give it that shine for one to help keep it shine, but it's also going to make it more durable and not uh, not smudge like when when the guy that did the sandblast and paint he wrapped a strap here and here at some point when he he was painting, so it kind of smudged the paint. So either the hardener wasn't wasn't activated yet it wasn't dry yet or um, there is no hardener in it but this has been outside for how many months in the sun shoot us we picked it up last summer it's still shining pretty good so i think he put a hardener in it anyways let's get it all mixed up four, uh, four ounces of acetone and then i'm going to add paint until i'm at 16 ounces usually it's easier to... well i don't it really matters. I just usually try and add the acetone first and then put the paint in. Well, it's probably easier to see since acetone's clear, I would think. Okay, so that's one part and that's three parts. We're gonna go four parts. Go to 20. We're gonna make it not quite as thin. It's pretty hot already. So I don't think that's gonna hurt us at all. As far as what we're doing today. So I have an air dryer on the line. Actually, I have an air dryer on each line in the shop. And uh, it's a good idea to drain your air dryers before you start. Because you get water in this paint, it makes these little bubbles like look like fish eyes, and you can't get rid of them. Okay. Next step is I need to add the hardener. Um, I don't know what the specs are in this hardener, how much it says instructions. Add one eight ounce to one gallon of paint. The whole thing popped off. Yeah, you know, I was trying to take the rubber cap off, the black cap off, but that didn't work so well. But well. As long as it seals back up. This is about half. 
that's enough for me. I don't know. I, I probably should have measured this out a little better, but it's not a car. It's not a truck. It's a trailer. It says, allow mixed product to sit undisturbed for 20 to 30 minutes before application. So we're going to mix this in good and it needs to sit for 20 to 30 minutes before we actually end up spraying it. So we'll get everything prepped and ready to go and then we'll come back and, uh, and load up the gun get ready to spray. Okay, airline set up. Most of the time I try and put halves in, put half a gun or half what's left so I know how much I have left when I'm spraying and I run out. You know, because this won't fill that gun fully twice. Another thing is you've got to make sure this vent on the top of your cap, this gravity feed gun, this vent has to be clean. If it's not clean, then it will stop. It won't let it, it'll put a vacuum on it and it won't let it pull any more of your paint out. Okay, time for my... I'll hold that for you. Normally I do this at the vise, mix it all up because you know, it's easier that way. The vise can hold the can hold the gun, but well, we have an assistant today. Okay. video the other side because I can't really get in there without getting sprayed so these are gonna look so much better than those dinged up fenders It's a final coat on. It is starting to level out pretty nicely as it starts to dry. It, it doesn't have as much of the um, orange peel kind of look you see here. It'll start to level out and actually become like a smooth paint. And it's just starting that here. I got it really, really heavy underneath here because this takes the the biggest beating of all because the tires are just you know constantly slinging crap right up against that. So. I got it really heavy in here, which, you know, since I did, I ended up with a, a sag or two, but I'm plenty okay with that. I'd much rather have too much paint than not enough paint. Um, over here, starting to level out pretty nice, right in that area, you can see. Of course, it's got dirt in it, because we're in a garage shop with a dirty floor, which I don't really care. It's a trailer, you know, I just, my goal is preservation. If I wanted, you know, um, car auto quality, then I would do something better, but that's not what I'm after. This fender got the second coat first, and you can see what a difference it is and how the finish 
starts to lay out, it really starts to smooth over and make a really, like the, the finishes that, uh, or the, the faces that, that start to cure out, you can see how it levels and it doesn't get that orange peel as much. And you can, uh, I mean, I think it's still okay for a trailer. It's not horrible, not great, but it's a trailer. Inside the fender turned out pretty good. Um, I'm not upset about it. I got some runs in here, but I don't mind. I don't mind at all. I'm probably going to end up with some runs around where that flange is, where the two pieces of metal meet, the fender back and the fender itself, because I really tried to lay it in there heavy because they always seem to rust in there and leave rust streaks, and I absolutely hate that. So hopefully I got enough paint in there. And if it means I have runs, I'm okay with that. I'd rather have a run than a rust streak for sure. We got this taped off up front here. And he's putting chip guard um, on the front part here where like rocks and stuff will be thrown up on it. It's more of a flat It's the next day, and this is all dry now. And uh, I've been thinking about this an awful lot. I really like the, the way this finish looks. I really like that. However, uh, being so this is going to haul side by side, and it's going to go, you know, in some muddy, dusty, dirty roads, this is pretty coarse, and it's going to trap a lot of mud and dirt, and it's not going to come clean real easy. And if you... If we put a leave it like this, it has UV protection, I'm sure, but um, it's not going to be nearly as good as if we put a couple of coats of paint on top of it so it becomes more durable, plus it's going to be easier to clean. I put a little coat here of just aerosol, and just the difference in the texture is, is incredible. So I think we're going to go ahead and mix up some paint and you know putting paint with a hardener on top of this will be it'll be worth it and there's a few spots that are kind of like shinier than others uh, i don't know if it's just shadows and it could be because it seems like it's all in the same area like right here and right here but i think uh putting a couple coats of paint on this is going to be a good idea uh, one i was going to do the fenders decided not to let's get this front end painted real quick give it a couple coats we can move on well, there's a first good heavy coat on. I don't care for the look nearly as well, but eh, you know the goal is preservation, not appearance. So uh, we'll wait until this uh, is able to be, have a second coat put on. We'll do that and then we'll let it dry. So uh, we'll see what it looks like then. Well, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is raining hard out there. And we knew it was going to rain this afternoon, so we got up this morning early, got out here, got everything prepped and ready to go and got it painted and it paid off. We we're able to get it painted and get the doors closed before it started to get humid and I think it's working out pretty well. I gotta tell you, I didn't think I would like the uh, chip guard with the paint over top of it, but it kind of gives it a metallic kind of look to it. I'm not upset. I, got, I didn't think I'd like it, but I was wrong. Uh, we got all the masking tape off and all the paper and stuff and Got a nice crisp line down through here. Nice crisp line on this edge. Uh, everything's looking good. It's not completely dry. We got some wet spots here and there where it's a little bit thicker. And uh, you know, it hasn't been tremendously warm today. It's been warm, but not hot like it was the other day. I'm happy with it. I think I'm, I think I'm pretty happy with it. The fenders have turned out, the paint wise, they've turned out the best I could expect. I'm not a painter. 
I did my best. It came out okay. Um, you can actually, when when the sun's out and the doors are open, you can actually see reflection in it. That ain't so bad right there. <laughs> the parts you can't see. <laughs> Anyways, not bad. I'm, I'm pretty pleased overall. They turned out as good as I could expect. You know, we're starting with a round trailer to begin with. I don't know if you guys remember from way back when, if you don't remember what this trailer was when I got it, there's a playlist, this is part of it. You can go all the way back from the beginning when I bought it, brought it home, started looking at it, all that kind of crap. But it was your bargain basement trailer just thrown together. And I've been trying to make this round trailer square <laughs> for a long time. And we ain't done. Uh, you can see here that this upright is uh, out at the top. You can see that that main runner kind of goes all cattywampus. We tried to straighten the top out as best as we could. And this side's no different. It's uh, it's 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 leaning in at the top, out at the bottom. The outside runner here kind of kicks that way. It is not perfect by any stretch, but I think it's going to suit our needs. We got all of our fenders painted. Everything's all the masking tapes off. We got a little bit of bleed through on our primer there, so you know we'll have to deal with that. But that's okay. I'd rather have too much paint and primer than not enough, but not bad. It's okay. For what it is <laughs> now you would think now that we've got all of our painting done and all of our mat un everything's unmasked that we and i've ordered the i've ordered a bunch of stuff for it and you would think now we're ready to start our our uh, reassembly process um <laughs> but you'd be wrong <laughs> we ain't done so this project's been going on for far too long and i'm at a point where i want to make some more changes to the trailer not in my best interest probably shouldn't do it should probably just finish it and go build another one or buy a different one it's not what i'm gonna do <laughs> so we're gonna be firing up the htp plasma cutter and the welder and we're gonna do a little bit more slicing and dicing on this because we're not done <laughs> we're gonna make some changes so uh, i would just tell you this it's gonna be something that most everyone is not doing for sure and um it should be pretty interesting so i hope you enjoyed our whole painting process of what we did how we did it why we did it and uh hope you check out the playlist and see how this trailer has come along in its life and keep watching to see where it's going to go it's going to be interesting i have to tell you so thanks for watching guys we'll catch you on the next one